Upfront and outspoken with Bob Williams. If you love the Constitution, man is not free unless government is limited. If you love freedom, as government expands, liberty contracts. If you believe in personal responsibility, if you believe America is still the greatest nation on earth, then get ready for an experience you'll never forget. This is Upfront and Outspoken. Here's your host, Bob Williams. And welcome back. This is, of course, Upfront Outspoken. I'm your host, Bob Williams, with you here on this Monday. Yes, I am a little upset. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to. I'm, I'm going to try to keep my calm. And if anybody knows me, you know that's going to be very hard. In order to understand what I am going to be ranting about, you need to understand a little brief history here. Yesterday. I ended up taking my wife to the emergency room at the uh, Sequoia, yes, the Sequoia Hospital in Salisaw, the emergency room. You know, Salisaw is only about 15 miles from the studio, but I had to take my, uh, you know, rush my wife to the emergency room uh, yesterday. But that's not the first time. Now, here's what I'm talking about. All of this started back in December. December 28th, to be exact. I had to rush my wife to the hospital because she was having severe problems. Breathing, chest pains, uh, you know, all, all of this. Went to the emergency room on the 28th. They sent her home with an uh, antibiotic, and that was it. A few days later, I ended up taking her back because the chest pains were even worse. And once again, what did they do? They just quickly went over her and sent her home and this has been ongoing now the antibiotics we found out she did have what they call pleurisy so uh, if it wasn't for the people over at the health and wellness center I don't think uh, we would have been able to to afford the medications that they wanted her to be on but the doctor at the uh, health and wellness clinic uh, gave her also an inhaler because of the fact that she had pleurisy now that went away okay that cleared up but lately once again extreme hard time breathing rapid almost passing out chest pains ongoing ongoing we went to the hospital two days ago well actually three days ago now what did they do they ran a complete battery of uh, blood work took some chest x-rays, everything came back negative, uh, you know, sent her home. That was it. See your doctor on the 18th. Well, yesterday, I ended up taking her to the hospital, again to the emergency room, and guess what? This time, we finally got the doctor to tell us what the hell was going on. They ran a CAT scan. They ran lab work. They ran a lot of things, but only after, only after the doctor had inadvertently heard me talking on the phone to a individual when I mentioned the fact that if we do not find answers here pretty soon, that I was going to be contacting an attorney. Then, and only then, did did the doctor come out and explain to us why they were only doing the basic tests and did not go beyond the basic blood work to all of this the reason we did not have a stack of money or secondly we did not have a premier health insurance policy for her hmm and sitting in the waiting room now mind you when you have someone that has extreme chest pains they are almost literally to the point where they are going to pass out you would think that the emergency room personnel would take the individual take them right back into the er into triage do what they do right away 
that's what you would think. But that was not the case with the Salisaw Hospital. They went in, a nurse took her blood pressure, took her temperature, we filled out the necessary paperwork, and they made her sit in the lobby for another hour. They made her sit there. Now, mind you, there was only two or three other patients in the triage area of the hospital. But yet they made her sit in the waiting room for an hour. Then they finally called her back. Another lady came in while we were waiting that had the exact same problems, suffering from pretty much the same symptoms my wife did. They made her sit in the waiting room as well after all the paperwork was taken care of. They diagnosed that lady with anxiety, but they decided because of her age, they were going to keep her at the hospital overnight. So what happened in my wife's case? Like I said, they ran a CAT scan. They did, all, they did more this time around than they did last time. But the doctor made it very clear to me that if I did not walk into that hospital with a pile of money or a premier health insurance policy, she was only going to get the basic exam. Now, mind you, the basic exam is x-rays, lab work, the doctor visiting, maybe a pill because they did give her one because her blood pressure was 191 over 92, extremely high. So they did give her a blood pill, you know, a blood pressure pill. It brought her blood pressure back down to 145 over 92. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. But I'm assuming that the last one, the 145 over 92, is within tolerable range. But the 191 over 92 is uh, extremely high. But anyhow, like I said, the doctor made it very clear that if we did not have that pile of money or the premier insurance, then she was only going to get the basic services. Now, as I said previously, while we were in the waiting room for that over one hour period of time, several other people came in. And everyone, everyone there was talking about Obamacare. And everyone that I was listening to in that waiting room had nothing but bad words about it. And the doctor made it very clear if we did not have a premier health insurance policy, she was only going to get the basic services. Now, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Does that tell you that there was possible malpractice? The Maybe the fact that there are no specialists on call? Or does that show a complete collapse of our existing health care system? You know, I intend to believe that it is the latter too. I don't believe the doctor was intentionally trying to misdiagnose my wife and send her home. But I agree, I state this, it, the fact that, number one, there are no specialists on call for this small hospital. The doctor recommended, do you have a car? Yes, I do. Well, then take her across the river to St. Andrews or Sparks Hospital in Fort Smith. That was his recommendation because they have the specialists on call 24-7. But he said, if you have a parcel of money, we can bring them in here right now. If you have a premier health insurance policy, we can bring them in here right now. That was his exact words. His exact words. And yet, this is, you know, it's, it just doesn't affect my wife. It affected this other lady as well. You know, she was on Medicare. But yet, because of the way our current health care system is, they would not call in a specialist because she didn't have a premier health insurance policy or a parcel of money. 
So what is that telling you about our health care system? What is that telling you about Obamacare when every single person in that emergency room at that time did absolutely nothing but complain about Obamacare? They complained about it. One lady, in fact, said her husband is paying out all this money for Obamacare, and yet it fails him. It is failing him. What is that telling you about what you are hearing about Obamacare? Many are saying, oh, it's a silver lining. It's, it's the uh, you know, aphrodisiac of medical care. It's not. It's not. If you have patients that are waiting and have to wait and wait and wait because they're under Obamacare or under the basic care. What is that telling you? What does that tell you? Does it tell you that our health care system is indeed in need of revamping? That Obamacare is quote unquote the silver bullet? No, it's not. It's a dud. My wife should have been, as long as, and as well as this other lady, should have been taken back into the emergency room. A second it was found out they may have had a heart attack or may be on the verge of a heart attack. I mean, the nurse that did the initial triage wrote it down on a piece of paper that her blood pressure was 191 over 92. That should have told people right then and there there was a serious problem going on. Only, only after I said that, number one, I may end up having to contact in an attorney and the fact that I told them I was a talk show host, did she finally get the CAT scan? All five times previous to this, every single doctor would not do that. They would not. And this time around, they took additional blood tests. They took additional precautions. Precautions they did not use the first four times. But only after I told them I was a talk show host, and only after I threatened them with an attorney did they get on the ball and do their job the way it should have been done in the first place so what did what came out as a result of this we found out my wife indeed has high blood pressure and the pain that she was experiencing and has been experiencing is due to that condition only after i threatened that is that what we as Americans need to do is threaten a hospital or threaten a doctor with a lawsuit? Will that change things? The medical community is under the gun. Doctors do not like Obamacare. They know there are restrictions within the ACA that they must abide by. They know this. So they are only going to provide the absolute bare essentials according to the ACA without regard for the patient. And yet you're going to be telling me, Bob, that's wrong. Excuse me, my throat's dry. You're going to be telling me, no, that's not the case. That is the case. I bear witness to it. I was there. I heard the people complain. Every single person that was in that emergency room at the same time my wife and I were there did nothing but complain about this quote-unquote silver bullet. It's a dud, folks. If people that have this, that have Obamacare, are complaining about it because it's not providing the health care they expected, what is that telling you? That is telling you that Ted Cruz and all those who were against Obamacare from the get-go was right. This is a train wreck. So what do we do? So what do we do? Why can't we go to a one-pay system? 
You go in, you pay one particular payment, it covers everything. Everything from lab work to a specialist being called in. Why can't we do it? You know why? Because there are too many Americans out there that are going to say that that is socialism. That's right. Too many Americans out there are there are going to proclaim that this is a socialism. And they don't want socialism. Is it really socialism to demand that we are provided with a proper health care system? Is that being so socialistic? I don't believe it is. Every American, I don't care if you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, no matter your gender, your, gen your sexual orientation, your sexual identity, are we not all entitled, entitled to a health care system that actually works and works in our favor? I believe we do. I am sick and tired of seeing the collapse of the health care system. I am sick and tired of hearing about people say, oh, this is the best thing since the invention of butter for your bread. It's not. It's not. And I have heard it every time, every single time I had to take my wife to the emergency room in Salisa. I have heard it from every single person in there that is under the Obamacare do nothing but complain that it is not providing the proper health care that they need for themselves and their family. It is not what you people have proclaimed to be the best things under the sun. It's not that. Ted Cruz and all of those who dissented against it were right. It is a train wreck. I am living proof. My wife is living proof, and everyone in that emergency room is proof, proof positive. And like I said, the only way, the only way I finally got reasonable answers was the fact that this doctor overheard me say that I was a talk show host and the fact that I would call an attorney if I did not feel we got answers only then only then did we finally start finding out what was wrong five times and you know how much a ho hospital room visit is an emergency room here in oklahoma here in oklahoma i've got the bills to prove it the very first time my wife went to the emergency room only to be sent home saying you've got pleurisy cost me twelve hundred dollars and that did not include the doctor that's right did not include the doctor his bill is another eight hundred plus dollars now you multiply that by five multiply that by five what i am going to be paying out to this hospital is what i paid when we bought our home over ten thousand dollars granted I, I made you know arrangements to pay the bill I'm not gonna say I didn't I did but I am gonna be in hock I am gonna be in hock for the next 12 years in order to get my wife out of debt and that is if only if only if she doesn't have to go back that's right, if she doesn't have to go back. Over $10,000, five visits, and finally on the fifth time did they run a test that actually proved what it was all along is not only the fact that she had pleurisy, but the fact she has high blood pressure. So now she's on medication for it. This is a sad day when doctors tell you if you've got a pile of money or you have a premier policy we'll do something for you otherwise you have to grin and bear the basics 
the basics in an emergency room. This is what people under Obamacare are facing. If she went to Sparks, they probably would have did more. But this is a smaller hospital. But should not this hospital be held to the same standards as, say, Sparks or Andrews, where they have specialists on call 24-7? Should this hospital not also be required to do that? But like the doctor said, the only way they're going to call in these people is if you have a premier insurance policy or you have a ton <coughs> excuse me a ton of money our health care system especially for small hospitals is falling apart <coughs> excuse me that frog in my throat is once again acting up but this is what we're facing against folks if you live in a small community and you have a small hospital, do not bank, do not bank on being provided the same health care as you would in a larger metropolitan hospital. Do not expect specialists to be able to be called into that hospital. If you have the money, they'll wake a specialist up fly him in or whatever to do it. If you have a premier health insurance policy, they will do the same. But if you are under Obamacare and you are doing what you have to, to cover your family, just the basic because you're working 40 hours a week, you have bills to pay and you can't afford a gold or platinum, whatever the hell they want to call it. Do not expect to get the same care as a multimillionaire would or somebody that has a ton of money or has this premier policy. And yes, I did see on the second visit my wife took to the hospital, I did see a huge difference. One patient was there. I don't, I don't know who he was or she. I, I, I don't even know the gender. But all I know is it was at night and yet they flew a doctor in from Arkansas to the hospital, a specialist. That's right. They flew him in by helicopter to check on this patient, to find out this patient did have a certain problem. And then that patient was admitted to the hospital. And the doctor said, right then and there, I'll see you tomorrow. A specialist. That's what Obamacare has done. The small community hospitals, they're, they're out, in, out on a limb. But if you have just the basic bare bones Obamacare, do not count on you getting everything you need if you have to go to an emergency room. Do not count on it. It's not going to happen. That was told to me very specifically by this doctor. This doctor was very point blank. This was the second time we seen him, but it took the second time to see him to get action because he overheard me say to a friend on the phone that it looks like if I don't get answers this time, I may have to call an attorney. And you don't think for one damn second that doctor threw that comment in my face time and time again? He did. He did, but yet, but yet because of that, the entire staff was on alert. They treated my wife as if she were gold. You know how normally when you leave an emergency room, the nurse is supposed to have, you know, put you in a wheelchair and guide you out to your vehicle as long as the vehicle's up to the door? Normally, they didn't do that. They just let her walk out the door, but not yesterday. Not yesterday. Not only that, but they were peaches and cream. They were doing everything they possibly could, so they did not risk the possibility that I might indeed make that call to an attorney. Is this what we have to do? Is this what we need to do? We shouldn't have to. 
If we had a one-pay system, incidents like my wife's would not happen. Incidents like what happened to the other lady that was in that emergency room at the same time my wife was would not happen. If a patient comes in complaining about chest pains, blood pressure extremely high, they would have taken her right back in there and did the triage. They would have hooked her up to the EKG. They would have did what they could to immediately get that doubt. Instead, they brought her and told her, well, you'll be called shortly. Just go up there and wait. Sit and wait. One hour later, one hour later, they finally called her back. One hour later. Is this what we are up against right now? It is. We have a broken health care system. Obamacare is not working. And I have heard that time and time and time again. Every single time I was forced to take my wife to the emergency room. Everybody that was there. Everybody. I never heard one person say a good thing about Obamacare while they were in that emergency room. Some of them were already in there two, three times before. Some, the first time. Some, maybe the second time. The ones that were there the first time, you didn't hear anything about. The ones that were there the second, third, fourth time, those are the ones that came out and said exactly what they thought. And those are the ones that realize that this current health care system is broken. The current system under Obamacare is a disaster. Is a disaster. Ted Cruz and all of his cronies were right. It is a train wreck. I'm living proof. My wife is living proof. Those that were in the emergency room more than one time are living proof. So do not believe for one damn minute what you're hearing in the propaganda machine coming out of D.C. That this is a good thing. It's not. They know it, but yet they're not going to tell you the truth. When it comes to small town America, when it comes to small hospitals, if you don't have a parcel of money and you don't have a premier policy, you're only going to get basic emergency services. Period. That's it. Then they're going to send you home and let you talk to your primary physician. And if that doctor decides to send you to a specialist, then maybe, maybe Obamacare will cover it. But if you're in the ER, hang it up, folks. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Sad day. A very sad day when somebody with a potential of having a heart attack has to wait until they decide what they're going to do. Until they decide to bring you back. What would have happened? What would have happened if my wife indeed had a heart attack or a stroke waiting for that hour to see a doctor what would have happened think about it when I come back James Napier will be my guest and we're going to be talking about the an event that's coming up here on March the 2nd oh boy what a day we'll be right back after NPR news don't go away <laughs> <laughs> 